How's it going everyone? This is Abe's Card Collection back with a review from the 2022 National Sports Collectors Convention. I was lucky enough to go for four days. Supposed to be there for five, but quite honestly I was very tired after four and just kind of wanted to get home that Sunday. So sorry this video is a little late on the recap, but I'm going to show you everything I was able to pick up from autographs to some set ads to some TTM fuel and I don't want to totally spoil it but at the end I'm going to show one of the biggest pickups probably in my collection not so much a pickup but something I got certified at PSA it was very expensive to get certified but really happy to get it done when less than I think four hours or something like that so if you're a big Pirates fan or vintage baseball fan or just appreciate the history of baseball that'll be something to stay tuned for or just fast forward through to that but this was the itinerary they gave us it was pretty jam-packed a lot of stuff so first thing i want to show you is all of the vip free signatures i was able to get or free autographs now these were the ones i had on sunday they basically give you 12 of these if you're a vip Six of them have names on them, and six of them are what they call wild cards. And if there is time at the end, they will call wild cards, and everybody rushes to the front to try to get stuff signed. So these are the two I did not get. Luckily, Don Money signs TTM. Stephen Baker used to sign TTM, so the cards I took for that, I might be able to get signed through there. But the first thing I was able to get signed, a Craig Lazinski baseball pretty cool from the bull also got him to sign a 1984 tops so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to stack everything up here i don't know what we're gonna do we're definitely gonna run out of space though then that same day i was able to get ron jaworski on this 86 i believe tops super nice guy really interactive with the fans so very cool also was able to get this picture he put the hall of fame inscription on there for the eagles hall of fame but ron jaworski was a big fan of his didn't see him play but loved watching him on espn when i was growing up even told him that and you know we kind of lamented on how they kind of screwed him over and stuff like that he was really appreciative of just i guess that i enjoyed watching him so there was a hockey player there as well I got two signed photos of him, and I know you're saying, Abe, why are you getting doubles? Well, half of this is actually going to my father, who is also a VIP, so I just haven't given him his half yet. But Bar Bernie Perrant, pretty cool, really nice guy himself, too. So two, two signed photos there. Of course, one's going to my father. The Jorsky picture and the Lazinski baseball are also going to him. Put those over here. I'm keeping the cards, though. Now, next are... We're going to try to go in order as best we can. I already hit the camera. So these are all the signed cards I got from the VIP signers. Mickey Morandini was there on Wednesday. So we got him here to sign a 1992 upper deck. And then a 1991 rated rookie, Donruss. Very nice guy. I actually had a little bit in common with my father. So they talked, talked a while over that. Um, then there was Bill Berge the next day. Oh wait, Abe, you're getting out of getting out of uh, line there. Also on Wednesday, former Yankee helped him win a couple World Series. Roy White got him to sign a baseball. Really nice guy. Put that over there with Lazinski. Let me see here. So then Thursday came around, and we had Bill Berge who signed a 76 tops, a 75 tops and a 71 tops pretty cool so three of three from bill Berge. he does sign ttm but very nice guy in person also that thursday we got former rookie of the year pat listash and he inscribed it 92 al rookie of the year pretty cool add to the baseball collection i don't show my baseball collection off that much but it is extensive next I don't even know what day it was. I think it was Thursday. Maybe it was Friday. Get my days all backwards. Bill Madlock. And I didn't just get one Bill Madlock. I used some wildcard tickets on him. I got an 82 Donruss. 
an 82 tops. Pretty cool. It's got one rookie card, two rookie cards, and an 86 tops. Again, able to get multiples because I was there with my dad and he had tickets as well. So we got five Bill Madlocks. Pretty cool. I actually went through the line, I think, three times. Twice or once with my uh, VIP ticket with his name on it. And then two different occasions with wild cards. I think I did two wild cards on these. And then I went back and said, hey, we have an extra two cards. We have two more wild card tickets. Let's just get five of his signatures because it's Bill Madlock. I think he was my uh, the prime VIP signer, at least in my opinion. And finally, well, not finally, there are two more. These were from Saturday, I believe. But we had Milt Thompson, former Philly, really nice guy as well. Love these uh, candy cane almost looking 88 Fleers. And we have them here on an 89 Tops. And I believe this is an 88 Fleer, 89 Fleer. That one I think turned out the best. Eh, these two are both pretty nice. And then finally, same day, we got Mike Nelms. Former kick returner for the Washington football team slash commander slash Redskins. He put a nice little Bible verse down there. Very nice guy himself. So that was all the VIP stuff. That was all pretty much free. I just had to buy, I had the baseballs. I had to buy three pictures for $5 each. All right. Now we can go to the pickups and then I'll come back to the signers. So. For our pickups, if you do not know or have not been following, I do collect the 58 top set. I'm looking to get a bunch of them graded in that 6 to 8 range. And I was able to pick up a bunch of graded ones. This was $150 for this lot. Pretty easy to deal with. Considering grading fees, I was happy with the deal. Most of them were, they were $10 to $20 each. So we have a Jerry Kendall. Roman Simprock, who actually I think still signs through the mail. I've actually gotten this card signed through the mail. Uh, Bob Smith, but the photo image variation, they had them back then too, a mistake. So that was a cool one to get. Andy Carey for the Yankees. Casey Wise. Let's keep going. Mike Trabowski. Gus Zerniel. Bob Grimm. And Willard Schmidt. So I thought that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good group of cards to add to the 58 top set. I'm approaching 50 some percent on that. And there are some monsters coming up in regards to that set soon. So let's put these over here. Well, uh, maybe not, but that's what we're going to look at next. Let's see here. I got a handful of cards here I got for $35 total. I think I got $5 off, but a Frank Gore 2008 Topps Chrome. Pretty cool card. I'm going to crack it out of this eventually. He does a lot of signings and gets some ink on that, some blue ink. I think it's going to look fantastic. Third time all leading rusher. In that $35 lot, I got six other cards that were... Let me pull this one out. Got six other cards that were six for 20. So some Nationals. Ian Desmond, Gypsy Queen. This was awesome. Paul Conurco. It's like a rookie card, too. Or I guess a minor league card. But that's awesome. Paul Canerco. Ky uh, Kiebert Ruiz. National stud now. Drew Storen. Michael A. Taylor World Series Relic. Really like that. And a Jose Vidro autograph to add to the National Slash Expos collection. And I'm going to run out of space very fast. That is okay. Because next I went over to a guy who had a lot of sweet vintage autographs. He did a lot of in-person graphing and had guys in for signings down in Florida. But these are some deceased Hall of Famers. We have Dick Williams on a 63 tops. That is what I paid sticker. So have a Monty Irvin. This is a reprint of a 53 tops, but pretty cool. He was a great TTMer himself. And then a 54 reprint of Monty Irvin. So pretty cool. Definitely getting these all slabbed up at some point. Signatures all look spot on. This guy had thousands and thousands and thousands of autograph cards. I'm going to actually get to him again at some other point here in the near future. 
let's see here. Here's the next one. Now all these were five dollars each, but T Vaughn Austin rookie card. Whoa, Abe, you're losing them. All right, T Vaughn Austin signed rookie card. Couldn't turn it down for five dollars. Love T Vaughn. Look at Catfish Hunter. I think this would classify almost as a patch. Has a little pinstripe there. Thought that was just a cool card for five dollars. Got a Sonny Jurgensen jersey. So probably going to send this TTM for 5 bucks, And then these cards are all encapsulated. Ooh, ooh, we'll put that one away for a second. Let's jump the gun on it. These are all encapsulated. Kevin Millwood does signings. This is like a gold refractor from Top's Finest, numbered out of 199 This is going to look awesome with ink. It's a Bobby Richardson Top's Pristine. Oh, Charlie Huff. That's going to look great with ink. Forgot about this one. Orlando Hudson Gold Refractor. Pretty sweet. He does some signings every now and again. Couldn't turn it down for $5. Larry Johnson's a great TTMer. And then two Mark Bolgers, WVU alum. My dad is actually his cousin. Or my dad's friend is actually his cousin and said if we busted these out, he'd give them to Mark to sign. So going to do that at some point. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I mean, these cards are all numbered really low, too, 99 or 199. I mean, pretty awesome cards. Ugh, thank you for bearing with me as I navigate through all this. We're going to get to some 58 top set ads next. Or at least one big one. How about a 1958 tops Ted Williams? Guy took $100 for this. This is card number one in the set. Really tough to get in any decent grade. I see no creases on it. Corners are okay. I mean, there's a little crunch down here maybe. But for $100, it was worth it because it is well-centered. These cards, again, are tough to find in any good condition because it's card number one. Kids back then used to put rubber bands around them. So you see these all tore up on the side. So very cool. This is actually a first vintage Ted Williams card in my collection too my hands almost shaking from how excited I was to find this card so it was buried under a bunch of other cards in this guy's showcase of course I was gonna offer a little less than sticker all right we're going back to what are we doing here Ooh, got some cool stuff coming up Let's see I'm trying to make sure I don't grab too much all right so this was all hundred dollars but again from that same guy Bought the Dick Williams and Monty Irvin from, but Tony Perez, pretty cool card there, 78 tops. Paul Blair, he is deceased. Ray Fossey, this was a cool one to find. Ray Fossey, what could have been if Pete Rose never collided with you? Jim Mudcat Grant, never had the privilege to get his autograph through the mail when he was living. I tried, and I was a little too late. So, with Jim Mudcat Grant, I picked this. He had a couple of them, but I picked this one out because of the inscription on there, Mudcat. Chuck Tanner, manager for the Pirates. He had a couple of these. I picked the cleanest signature one. How about a Mickey Vernon, 63 tops. My Washington Senators. And then three Bob Friends. We have a 58 tops um, All-Stars. We have a 59 tops. And then we have a 61 tops. So, three Bob Friend cards. I'm pretty sure I took all of his Bob Friend cards. All right, back to some really cool 58 top set ads. All of these are from the same guy. I went to him twice throughout the day. The last day I was there. Spent $340 on these next three cards. But this one is amazing. I suggest, now that I have one in my collection, I suggest if you don't, Start looking for one, but it is a 58 tops Mickey Mantle, Hank Aaron, dual card. It is the only card they ever shared together during their playing career. So pretty amazing card. Really tough to find at a good price. Then I got a Bobby Richardson rookie card. Very cool. Another tough card to find at a good price and then a Willie Mays 58 tops this one wasn't he had another one that was a little better center but its corner was completely crunched so I picked this one out so those three cards were $340 that was a big one then I went back to him later 
else I wanted to add or Roberto Clemente 58 tops to the collection. These next two cards were $145. But Clemente 58 tops. Very cool. Decently centered. Not much wrong with it. Maybe a little corner wear, but that's to be expected. And then a 58 Bobby Richardson. This is a very special card because it has, you can see here, the letters are yellow. That was a special variation. And hard card to find. Very hard. Very well centered. So, I think it has a little wrinkle or something down here. So, it might just be like a set filler for a while. I saw a PSA 7 of these selling for like, okay, online it was $130, but at the show it was $250. It was tough finding some deals out there. Not even just finding deals, but finding fair prices. So, as you can see, I dealt with a lot of the same guys that had fair prices. Alright, I'm starting to lose my voice. Appreciate everybody bearing with me if you're still here. Here's $30 worth of stuff out of some uh, boxes. But, Tom Jackson, going to try to send this TTM. Ernie Witt, Lance Parrish, Dale Murphy, all signed TTM. Of course, Murphy and Parrish have fees. Then there's Ernie Witt, great signer. Doug Williams, rookie card. Wanted to add that. Hopefully get it signed at some point. This is what started this lot for me. Look at this Fergie Jenkins rookie card. Huge crease down here. Can't really see it that well with the top loader. But this was super cheap. This card is... I mean, it's not that bad. I'd pay $15 for this all day. He does sign TTM. I think it's $40. Maybe I'll send this to him. We'll see. And then a Larry Doby 58 tops. I'm pretty sure I had this card in my uh my 58 set but it was a phenomenal price and i couldn't like i couldn't leave it there all right now this is probably the coolest stuff well minus the last thing these are all the cards i got signed in person and i have the pig bopper on front didn't intentionally do that but let's just go with it Reggie Jackson, waited three hours for him, but I got the rookie card signed. That is sweet. I was going to say sick, but it's sweet. It's beautiful. I mean, wow, I've had this card in my collection for 15 years. So happy to get it signed. Then we got Frank Gore. I know I didn't get him to sign the gold one, but I got him to sign his rookie card. 2005 Bowman. I'll see Frank Gore again soon, I'm sure. But pretty cool. Nice guy. All of them were nice. That's the one thing. And here was the nicest guy. This guy made the weekend. Johnny Bench signed rookie card. Now he was not supposed to add inscriptions to any cards. And when I got up there, we started talking. You know, real nice guy. Said I collect Hall of Fame rookies. You know, like he knew I never saw him play, but told him I read about him, this and that. And he, for free added the hall of fame inscription on a card and he wasn't supposed to add any inscriptions you could see the guy next to him like camera if he's a fanatics exclusive now or something like that cringed a little bit but he did it anyways he said he picked out he made sure he tested a couple pens he picked out the best one he said and he signed it i mean wow really like just blown away by that nice guy took care of everything just really nice rod woodson Signed rookie card. Love Rod Woodson. Dan Issel. Signed rookie card. Put the Hall of Fame inscription on that one as well. For no upcharge. Willie Lanier. He was a character himself. He, uh, he saw some Steelers shirts. My dad was wearing one. He said, so what the hell is wrong with your dad? He should have been a Chiefs fan. I said, <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't know how to respond. But <laughs> he was a funny guy. He was joking around with a lot of people. So he even put his Hall of Fame inscription on here, 86. Hard to see, but that is his rookie card. And then this one, Paul Krause, Hall of Famer, 98, put the inscription on there. This is his rookie card. This card is not easy to find in decent shape. And he commented on it. He said, whoa, this is a clean looking card. You don't see this very often. I said, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I took a lot of pride in finding one. So, really awesome. Like Reggie and Johnny Bench, those guys are like inner circle Hall of Famers to me. And then these guys, all, of course, are all Hall of Famers. Frank Gore is definitely going to be a Hall of Famer, I think. 
Okay, so you stay with me for I don't even know how long at this point. This is the big one. I've had it in this ever since Thursday morning. You know who that is? That is a Roberto Clemente signature. Yes. It is certified by PSA. Bob Moose is also on here. You can kind of see him here in pencil. They said that because both signatures were on there, they had to certify both of them. And this is awesome. <laughs> I've had this since 2016. It's actually an old Pittsburgh Pirates throwback. 1970 uh, pocket schedule. Got the KDKA TV there. My mom's cousin had this in his pocket. And Roberto was standing there and he said, Hey, Roberto, can you sign this for me? He said, of course. Bob Moose walked over and said, nobody ever asked for my autograph. And he says, here you go. Why don't you sign it as well? He then stuck this in his wallet for 30 some years. And then in 2000, got a new wallet. That is why it's all disgusting up here. Signature looks beautiful for Roberto, Roberto though. And uh, stuck it in a safe for 16 more years. And then he was cleaning out his house and said, hey, you want this? And I said, absolutely. What do you want for it? He wanted nothing for it. So, of course, I had to find like a $200 bottle of scotch to give to him, which this is worth more than 200 bucks, but I, I didn't know what else to give him. And I did pay $225 to PSA to get this or reviewed, certified, slabbed. And I dropped it off at 6 o'clock at night Wednesday, picked it up at, I don't know, 11 Thursday. If you can't tell, I'm like, I'm really excited about this one. This is amazing. I've held on to this. For a long time, never wanted to mail it in. Just wanted to make sure that it was going to be taken care of. And I did it all in person. PSA was good. They talked to me about, you know, the process, everything. Making sure everything was done right. So, man, this is a big one. This is one of, like, the top two or three things in my collection. So, that is my national. And I think that's a good way to end it. Went a little out of order because I got this on Thursday, but Roberto Clemente signed cut is what they call it. Signed pocket schedule from 1970. So yeah, and it's still pretty clean. Pretty nice ink there. Hands are even shaking a little bit just looking at it. I apologize for rambling on too. This one, I just, I love looking at it. But thank you for watching everyone. I hope you all are having a fantastic weekend, I think is when this is going to come out by. If you're at the National, I hope you had a fantastic time. I don't know how you couldn't just walking around and seeing everything and talking to people, but, but yeah. Thank you again for watching. Bye for now.